A register is the simplest form of memory in a digital computer. It's just a set of bits, like flip-flops or latches, that stay until you tell them otherwise. I'm using the SN74HC574 chip, and it's known as an Octal Edge Trigger D-Type Flip-Flop Tri-State. It's an 8-bit register, and it's clocked. So besides VCC and ground, you've got 8 in bits and 8 out bits. 1D through 8D, and 1Q through 8Q. So D is input, Q is output. You usually see Q as the result of some digital logic thing. Beyond that, there's only two pins. You've got output enable, which is active low, and you've got clock, which is active high, so it's rising edge. The operation of the chip is incredibly simple. Every time the clock pulses high, it sets the outputs to the inputs. And then if output enable is low, it's putting out output. If output enable is high, the outputs are off and they're all high impedance. That's it. So input on the clock and output on or off. So obviously its most basic function is a register. Anywhere you want to register, here you go. It's not bit addressable. You want a bit addressable latch if you want to change a bit at a time, but if you're doing like eight bit operands and you always manipulate eight at a time, you, this will work just fine. And it's clocked, so it'll fit in with other clocked logic. The big thing about a register being clocked is that its outputs don't change until you tell it to. So what you could have is some sort of chip before the register plugged into the register or some sort of logic sequence, like a CPU operation, like you could have add, multiply, whatever, and it goes into the register, which is the result. And as the, the chips go through their propagation, the inputs to the register are fiddling around and the register is just waiting patiently until you tell it to grab the result and then the output of the register doesn't change until you do that. So whatever shenanigans are going on before the register, after the register is nice and stable. So you can use this, and I'll show you an example in the next video, to take any non-clocked chip and make it clocked. You just take that unclocked chip and throw this register on the end and it adds a clock to the chip. Nice and easy. But because of the tri-state, you can connect this to a bus. Like this might be connected to an address or a data bus. So you have your device providing data to the bus and then you can turn it on high impedance mode anytime you want. So you could have multiple devices that all, let's say, each device might want to request an address to be loaded from RAM. So you could have the device has pins telling it which address to load, and then you attach this buffer so that only the device that's enabled, you know, if you have another one, so this one is on. So the device on its own clock can load the register. The loading the register and the output are completely separate. So the device can worry about setting the value and the value can just be sitting there ready. And so the device could say, I'm ready. And the instant that happens, whatever CPU you've got, whatever microcontroller could go ahead and turn on this buffer, the device would already have populated the result. And as soon as it turns it on, it could then do something with the data. So that, that's pretty handy for having each device able to do its own computation long or short and signal when it's ready and then all the controller has to do is turn on the buffer. And obviously if you do two of them, you have a bus transceiver. So a register can also be a buffer. The, the, the main purpose of a register is to have something that you can set and then change its inputs and it stays set, it's memory. But you can also use it as a buffer. It's a clocked buffer, so you have to pulse the clock every time you want it to, to buffer through. But if that's fine for you, then you, know, you can use it as a digital signal buffer to insulate whatever's generating the signal from the rest of the system. And a bus transceiver would do that both ways. If you want that behavior, but you don't want it to be clocked, then you'd want to get a chip that's actually a digital buffer or something called a transparent latch, which is basically just, it's, it's a register except the inputs follow the outputs without any sort of clock signal. So this is one of those lovely devices, or chips rather, that has a million uses, and that's what I look for, is one chip that can do a whole bunch of things, because an ongoing thing of mine, and something I eventually want to do a video on, is for a hobbyist who does a lot of breadboarding, you want to have a small number of chips and a large number of them. So like a box of op amps, a box of registers, a box of adders. And you want to be able to combine those chips in interesting ways rather than having 80 chips or, or far more than 80 in fact. So the fact that you can use this 
To make a bus transceiver means I don't have to have a bus transceiver. Any situation I need a clocked digital buffer or register with simultaneous parallel load, I can use this. So I can have a box of these and I can make eight different chips out of it. So that's pretty useful. Simple, basic, nothing to write home about, but I mean, if we're making a sandwich, we don't complain about the simplicity of bread. The bread needs to be there for it to be a sandwich. So while you think about what to have for lunch, I'll be seeing you.